welcome it's me Persita, and this is Persita's paradox here we are the last day of august but if you know me you know that i'm a virgo and we are in virgo season and i'm super excited about it if you're new to this channel thank you so much for joining me i greatly appreciate you your time and efforts to find me on this channel since i have been mia for the last two weeks but i greatly appreciate you and of course if you're an og thank you so much for sustaining and bearing with your girl while I was on a much needed, unadulterated, grown up, can't believe it, Greek in vacation. I was in Santorini. I did Mykonos. I did Creed. I cannot tell you how I now understand what sunbathing really is. Never have I ever been on an island and felt as if I just didn't need to do anything. No excursions, nothing. But we'll talk about that later. So. Again, I'm so happy to be back with you. It was fantastic. I am sorry that I forgot to give you a lead into the fact that I was not going to be here. And I wasn't really interested in doing videos on like I did at, with my vacation for the family in July. And, you know, really try to give you videos while I was away because I really just wanted to unplug. And even though I posted here and there as far as pictures, I just didn't want to have to sit and think about what I can say to sound smart, if that makes any sense. So this is my first video back and I'm super excited about it. Again, this is Virgo season. My birthday is in September. I have two more trips planned. Um, and on those trips, I will definitely send out some beautiful vlog type um, videos, but I just wanted to come back and explain a little bit on what was going on and what's happening going forward. In the month of September, I'm hoping to introduce some new platforms uh, in regards to ideas in what Procedus Paradox is bringing. And I'm also really excited about uh, a new format on this channel. So stay tuned. It'll be worth it. So today, I just wanted to come and touch bases with you. I wanted to, you know, just let you know what was going on. But at the same time, I just had this really interesting epiphany while I was in layover in London. And what I really started to pay attention to was just what I had been playing with in regards to conversations that I was having with some family and friends over the last couple of months. And what that really was, was just this whole thing about trust, right? And I'm thinking about trust in regards to just everything across the board from this COVID thing that's going on and do you vaccinate or do you not vaccinate down to just the simplicity of what moves to make in your lives as far as day to day or just career or anything of the sort. This big thing of trust is really resonating throughout the world right now. And it's interesting because even while we were in London, we because we had the layover, right? And it was a it was a pretty extensive layover. We were not willing to leave the airport because of the COVID restrictions and the need for an additional COVID test if you actually leave the airport. If you're transitioning or in transit from one country to the next, there's no issue. But when you're laying over longer than two hours, the irony is, is that back in the day, I would literally just go and either get a room or do something of the sort, you know, and kind of make it an extended vacation. But because I knew that United Kingdom had issues, I didn't want to do that. And I give you that background because the trust that that country has for you not doing things right is so extensive that even while we were there, the, the people who were transitioning from one uh, place to the other, one country to the other, were actually quarantined in the airport. Never have I ever been in a position where I felt like that was just a little extra. Not good, not bad, I understood it, but it was just really this thing of like, wow, you don't actually even trust people who are trying to get home, who have clearly had to have had a COVID exam to get to this point. And they're not leaving the airport because they don't want to have to go through your immigration because there's no way around not having an additional COVID test, but you still don't trust people enough to even believe that to be true. So you would prepare, meaning me talking about London or particularly the UK, you would prefer to actually quarantine people at the airport. And what I mean by that is that they literally put you in a separate terminal. And literally, I didn't pay any attention to it, but locked the elevator for you to be, or in their words, locked the lift in order for you to be able to access the departures, 
main floor. Now, because I went to sleep, I can't really tell you if there was any other access to it. But what I will tell you is that we were told before I went to sleep to stay awake enough because when we were then ready to be moved over to, you know, our terminal to leave, to depart, to come back to the States, we would be literally escorted there. And the more I thought about it, the more I thought, wow, the entire world is under this auspices of just not trusting each other. And I thought about it and said, like, how real is that on the day to day life? How real is it that we just don't trust ourselves enough to even trust someone else? And it came to me. Half of the reason of why we don't trust other people is because we don't trust ourselves. And we do find ourselves being in a space where what would we do in that situation? Like what would, you know, what would I do, quote unquote, if I had the ability to move around or to leave the airport and to come back or whatever that is, would I trust myself enough to use my integrity uh, to literally do what I needed to do and follow the rules? And I would say, yeah, I mean, I believe I would, but I still think about all the other times that I don't trust myself to continuously wear my mask because I know that I've actually pulled the mask off of my nose, not down to not cover it. But if you understand what I'm saying, to actually pull it away so that I can breathe a little and I feel like I have heat coming up my face. I don't know if you can relate to that, but it made me laugh because I literally understood in the middle of thinking about that, why the UK and the airport transportation, you know, Federation, you you know, whatever that would be for them wouldn't trust us. And then it came right back to me on this trust thing that we're going through in life right now is that it really stems from just ourselves. We know that we're capable of kind of making way and BS and through the world and doing what we want to do or doing what we deem to be important. And it and everyone now is in a place of understanding that if they're willing to do it or if they don't do it perfectly 24 hours a day, then nine times out of 10, no one else is doing it. And I I say that because now when I apply it to something other than COVID, I recognize it to be that typically our trust is so minimal for ourselves, meaning we don't trust ourselves to make the best decisions for ourselves, that it causes us to then not trust other people. But we typically say to other people, no, 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 trust is really important for me and I have to be able to trust you only to really truthfully have to own and recognize that it's not really a matter of you trusting other people. It's a matter of you, do you trust yourself and judging the right type of a person to come into your life or to be a part of whatever it is you're doing? Do you believe in yourself to trust yourself enough to know that the initial trust is never going to be the bearings of anyone else? It would have to be you bearing the blunt of what that is, or I should say the brunt of what that is, and that is you, right? So I realized that if I ever have any trust issues with anyone other than myself, I'd have to know that the true misconception is that I don't trust myself, and I don't trust myself in making the best decision for myself, and I don't trust myself in not failing. And because we typically walk through life looking for absolutes, and we're looking for things to really be where we're not really running the risk of messing up. Trust is really hard to come by. And it's funny now, not funny in the sense of humor, but funny in the sense of irony on how you can just see and feel what I'm saying more and more. I mean, more of us want to believe that we're able to really understand the vaccination. Let's just say we like, we really believe that we really need some sense of education about it in order to make a proper decision. But what we're truly saying is that we don't trust ourselves enough to make the right decision. Therefore, we don't trust anyone else to tell us what it is that we need to do. Does that make sense? And it's crazy when you think about it that way, but it really is just what's perpetuating throughout the world as a whole. I mean, you can try to do everything you can to cause some sense of integrity that would transpire between each one of us. But in situations now, it just feels like everything is really so crucial. It's so critical. It's so life or death. It's so there's no room to fail or there's no room for error that we're just stressing ourselves completely out. And my dream and my hope is that we actually start to learn to trust ourselves, to believe in you 
enough to know that you're making the best decision for yourself without the fear of wondering, am I right or am I wrong? I'm starting to understand for myself, especially going into yet another year of, you know, just lockdowns and, and COVIDs and Deltas variants and all of the other things that are going on in the world trying to adjust to really make that happen, that that's the thing that's really going around. Like there's just such an intense lack of trust that it's really spilling over into areas of our lives that it's always been. But now it feels like it is in excess of what it normally is. I mean, we don't really have a lot of foundation and trust, especially in my country, as is, especially for people of color, especially for being, you know, being a black woman or however you want to look at it. We've been told and blown lies for a very long time. So a lot of us do run the gambit of being in fear about making the proper decisions going forward. But I'm saying that instead of really focusing on the others and if I trust the person's telling me the right information, I'm learning that I need to trust myself to believe that I will be able to pick up on whatever it is that's coming my way to be best for me. Because let's just be honest, anybody can tell us anything, anything. And they can spin it and make it as much of a truth as it is a lie. So the idea of trying to be in a place where you can control that narrative becomes crazy. So what I pray for, what I'm looking for, is to have some sense of discernment, some sense of connection with myself and my thoughts and my higher power in order to make the proper decisions and to be okay with myself if I don't make the proper decision. Because that also causes us to not trust because we did not make what we thought would be a bad decision and it turns out to be a bad decision or just not a decision that you want to deal with. Therefore, you're beating yourself up about it. My prayer is that we actually learn to just understand that it's ourselves that we're leaning on in regards to trusting. We have to trust ourselves in order to trust other people. It equates to you have to love yourself in order to love other people. There's absolutely no way to do it. So in the whole self-care, self-love idea that we talk so much about, we don't really identify that all of those things encompass self-love and self-care. They, they all are there. They're all necessary for us to actually make it prosperity-wise through life. Now, when I say prosperity, I'm not referring to just money. I'm referring to health, wealth, the mentality, the mindset, the exposure, the surroundings, the environment, everything for me will roll into or encompass prosperity because all of those things build wealth within you. So be clear about that. But in the exact same breath, I think we just have to really start learning ourselves better. I say that because I really do feel like most of us really have an idea of what's good and what's bad for us. Sometimes we make a decision based on peer pressure. Sometimes we, we literally trust something because it seems like it should be trustworthy because someone told us to do it is what I'm really referring to. And sometimes, you know, we really do it because we just want to do something different. Try to understand me when I say that not always is something different necessary in order for your trust to be built on any sense of foundation. Just remember that if you are really moving in the vein that you need to and your mindset is stayed and focused on your actual goals and aspirations and what it is you're trying to do and you're still trying to be loving within the world within, you know, within context and you're still trying to be what society would call as a good person and you're not really trying to hurt anyone and you're not moving in a position where you know, you're, you're encompassing, not identifying that you don't live in this world alone, I think that the trust thing will actually shift for you. I think that you'll actually be in a space where you'll be able to actually love and be loved because you'll trust a person's intention because you'll know your intention. So I know that's a lot, you know, but that's that's what 10 days in sun and island will do to you. It just really caused me to really think about what trust really meant, right? And not really under the premise of just the idea of like, we're always looking for someone to tell us the truth because I think that can also be defined in different ways and it can be defined in the manner of you not 
believing or understanding someone else's truth because that's an you know it's just subjective what a person believes their truth is i could hear it and say that's not true at all and they say but it's true to me who defines what is true or not true so then i'm starting to understand that if that be the case then trust would have to run pretty neck and neck Sometimes people will literally say, you know, I, I know people, let me say it this way. I know people who will say, you know, that I don't lie. And what they mean by they don't lie is that they just don't say anything. So to them, if you're not saying anything about anything, then you're not lying. I know other people that would call that a lie. You kind of catch what I'm saying? It's like it's all in subjectiveness of what it is you believe or want to believe. So we look at trust in the exact same manner and stem all of its foundation within ourselves, then it's kind of hard to not trust because you would already be trusting that you're going to, to understand or ask the question or decipher or whatever it is, you know, determine what is best for you. So I don't know, you know, again, that was just like the ramble of the day. I was talking to a girlfriend and, you know, and it brought it back up in my spirit. And I was like, you know, I'm going to start my series back um, and talk about that. Right. So, you know, hit me in the comments. Tell me if, you know, you you understand what I'm saying, if it makes any sense to you in regards to what I'm saying. I'm always interested to know that. And but, you know, just understand that it, it's always going to be subjective. Right. And I think that's really where the conversation has to start in order to understand that's the uniqueness of trust. It's based on what you believe it to be, which means it's based on you. So again, like, share, comment, do all those other good things. Hit the notification button, all of that stuff. Uh, but definitely hit me in the comments. I know, I know. This channel is like really an interesting channel because people really don't like to tell other people their business. So I get it. And I'm not really caught up on it in regards to that. So if I don't think I have. Matter of fact, I know I have not put my email in the comments in a very long time because I've actually been getting comments, but I will also put it in the comments this time. I'll make a note so I don't forget and we'll go from there and see what exactly is going on with you and how you feel about what I just said. So again, thank you so much for joining me today. I greatly appreciate you and all of your time and all of what you bring to the channel and all of your love that you have given to me and even the people who have sent me messages asking where I was. I'm back uh, at least for the next you know couple of days and then we'll, we'll be somewhere else, right? So your girl is just going to actually take to the streets as long as they will allow me. So always remember to do three things. Live life authentic. Live life authentic. Even when it doesn't make sense. Even when you're rambling. Even when not everyone can understand what you're doing because they don't really understand your moves. And they may put you in a position where you don't feel comfortable in it. Trust that you trust yourself enough to know what it is you need and what it is that you're desiring and what it is that you were told you were supposed to do, regardless of all that stuff. So living life authentic will absolutely assure you that that will be handled. Thanks again, as always. I will see you on Thursday and have a great day. Bye-bye.